welcome to another edition of the Fuji Guys. And today we're going to go through the top features of the new underwater camera from Fujifilm, the XP80. Uh, so this is the uh, latest in the shockproof, waterproof camera. So please sit and enjoy. So uh, with the XP80, it has full HD video um, as well. So it's a one-touch video button that you can see here up at the top. Before we get into starting a video, we're just going to take a look at the different movie modes we have. So there, under the menu, uh, you're going to see here under the second page, you're going to see the movie mode. Hit to the right, and here you'll see all your different options. So you have 60 frames per second, so that's a nice fluid um, action type uh, video. We got 30 frames per second and 1080 as well, and then 720 at 60 frames per second. And then you have uh, some faster frame rates of up to um, 320 frames per second here, but at a 160, 120. So that gives you that slow motion video type mode. So really cool for um, and really neat uh, video effect when you're doing um, action type video. Uh, so if we go back here to the top, and we're just going to go back to the uh, 1080 at 60 frames per second. Um, and then of course you do have access to the zoom as well during the movie modes. Um, and the AF mode you also do have some center and continuous type um, focus modes as well. So when you get to start the video you just hit that red button and you can see here that the video has come in. Now I'm in the SR auto mode so the scene recognition mode is kicking in and it's giving me a macro. If I was to have a, a portrait in the shot it would then give me a portrait and so on. Um, same with landscapes and action. Um, and then as I, I can certainly use my zoom too. So I do have access to the zoom. It's pretty quiet. Uh, you're not going to hear it too much. And you also do have access to of course taking pictures. So you just hit the shutter release to take a picture during the video mode. So we also have a um, uh, high speed shooting button here at the bottom of the, um, of the bottom of the camera here and right beside the, what the Wi-Fi symbol is and we'll get into that uh, in a moment. But for now we just hit the, uh, the, the high speed shooting mode and you can see here in the top um, of the camera it shows you that you're in high speed uh, shooting mode. And that basically gives you a one, uh, one touch button to get you into high speed shooting. You can get up to um, anywhere between 10 to 60 frames per second um, in high speed shooting. So now we're going to uh, go into the menu and show you where you can actually change that. So on the second page of the shooting menu, so just to show you uh, the first page here, so we go, that's the first page with all your shooting options. Um, so we go into P mode for shooting. And then, um, then we can go to the second page and we see here continuous and to the right. So here we got the different types of continuous shooting. So you can go to super high, which then gives you the 60 frames uh, per second at a reduced resolution. So you'll see, and it'll warn you, that you're shooting in a small file format. So you're talking about um, less than a megapixel per, per image. But in a second, you get 60 frames that you can uh, that you can pick from. So it really does provide you the ability to really make sure that you capture the uh, capture the action um, and be able to really uh, take advantage of the um, the full speed of the camera. So on top of the self timer options that you have with the camera, which is a two second and a 10 second self timer, uh, as well as a group timer. So the group timer is really neat. This allows you to do like one person. So now you can choose how many faces that you're gonna do. Um, so this allows you to do one person to select the number. Oh, I didn't wanna go that far. So here we go, go back, there it is, faces by pressing up. So we go up and now we can actually choose how many faces that we're gonna choose. And then it'll automatically determine when there's a face in the picture to take a picture. Um, the other uh, self-timer mode of course is the interval shooting. Uh, and then once you choose the interval shooting, it's gonna give you the choice of how, what interval. So up to, up to one every 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to set it to 15 seconds, and then you can set it to up to, you know, 60 minutes uh, to six hours even. So I'm just going to set it to five minutes for a moment. Um, and then when you hit the shutter release, the screen is going to go black, and it's going to basically kind of go into a sleep mode. I'm going to let the camera take, you know, a couple of pictures here just to kind of show you um, 
what the effect is. So now it's going to take another shot. There we go. And we'll wait another shot. So it's going to take multiple shots every 15 seconds, or it's going to take one picture every 15 seconds. So you end up with multiple shots that you can work with. Let's wait for this one more shot. And there we go. So we're just going to now cancel that. And we go into the playback mode. And what you can see now is the last picture that was taken. And then the time lapse is the sequence is right here in the bottom right hand corner. So after, you know, two, three hours of shooting, uh, and you go to look at your playback, you'll be able to actually see what the final effect will look like in the bottom right hand corner here because it'll just keep scrolling through the images in the, uh, in the intervalometer itself. So some really neat features for, for group and outdoor type stuff and to be able to get really creative with this camera. So the whole point of these rugged type cameras, of course, is so that you can take some action pictures with them, whether it's you know, mounting it to a snowboard or uh, mounting it to a bicycle mount or something along those lines where you can really get some action shots. Um, so there is an action mode with the camera for video. Uh, so in the menu, uh, you go into um, the shooting modes, which is in the first menu here where the P is. So you go into the shooting modes and here the first uh, scene position is the action camera. So we're gonna select the action camera I'm going to get out of the menu here. So you can see the symbol up here as the action camera. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start a video. Um, and what's going to happen is, is you can see that the LCD is going to turn off. And there it goes. So now this LCD is turned off. This is going to maximize your battery power. And what you're seeing now here is a blinking light. So there's the blinking light. And this is just to uh, warn you there to let you know that it is video that it is recording. And of course, when that light goes out, it means it stops recording. But also when you stop recording or when the um, memory is maxed, you just heard that beep. That's to warn you that your video has stopped uh, and to restart your video again. So if you're wearing it on a bike helmet or something like that, uh, that way you can really hear that, oh, the video has stopped and I can start a new video again. Um, an added accessory that we've added is this wide angle lens. And what this lens does, and we call it the action camera lens, and it gives you a wider 18 millimeter wide angle um, image. And that basically gives you kind of the same, you know, that you see with most of the action video cameras that are out of the market, a nice wide angle view. Um, that'll certainly give you a lot more in your picture and a less jumpy of an image because you are looking at a wider angle image. Continuing with, uh, you know, creative type modes and, and uh, a great little travel camera, oftentimes we want to be able to take panoramic pictures. Uh, and to take those panoramic pictures, we just go into the menu and we go into the shooting modes and we go all the way down so we see panoramic. You can see there's many different modes here, including landscape and some advanced filters. Uh, but here's our motion panoramic and you can do up to 360 degrees so you can actually do a full rotation and get an amazing uh, panoramic shot. So we're going to select that and now what's going to show is going to show us angle and direction. So what I'm going to suggest is for direction is that you use either from you know bottom to top or top to bottom which is going to basically maximize the sensor to get you the most image quality in your panoramic. And for the angle I'm just going to leave it at 120 but as you can see there you could do up to 360. So with 120 just for the demo purposes for, for our little uh, demo here just make it a little easier. So this line here is what guides you and that's the direction. So I'm going to turn my camera to the side and I'm just going to do a quick panorama in the room here. So I've hit the shutter release and then I start rotating the image. And then once I rotate and I'm done rotating around the camera will then show me what I've done. My wonderful setup here. So now I go into playback mode and there's my video and if I want to play that I just hit down and now it'll show me my uh, panoramic image. So it, uh, it gives just another added feature, another creative function while you're out shooting to get even more in your pictures. So more and more as we travel, this is the perfect little travel camera, we want to be able to share those pictures, uh, whether it be social media or just email. Um, we want to be able to get those pictures that we got 
from our underwater camera um, as quickly as possible, either onto our iPhone or Android device. Um, so whether it's a tablet or a phone or otherwise. So the first thing you have to remember is what app you want to download. So the app that you want to download is the camera remote app for the uh, the XP80. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go into Wi-Fi mode by hitting menu and then you see here on the second page you're going to see wireless communication. So you hit to the right to activate the wireless communication part. So now I got to go into my settings and pick the Wi-Fi connection that's there. So there's the XP80. And once we see the little check mark, there it is, we're going to now connect to our Android or our uh, iOS or Android app, the camera remote app. We're going to hit camera remote. And now it's asking, do you want to connect? Yes, I do. So I hit OK. So now, um, I hope you can see that OK. There we go. So now we can see everything that the camera sees. And we can certainly use our zoom and zoom back. We have access to our flash, so we can have auto or forced or suppressed flash. We have access to our self timer, our two second or 10 second self timer. And we have access to video as well. So all you do to shoot a picture is the big red dot here. You just snap that. There we go. It needed flash, so it fired flash. Uh, and then we can do a little video as well. Just slide it over and hit video. And now you can see how the video works. Gives you a little battery indicator here, as you can see just above the zoom arrow there. And we're going to stop the video. And then once you're done all your pictures or, or you want to just review your pictures, you just hit the little playback button, the green playback dot there. And this gives you everything that's actually on the memory card itself. So you have full access to whatever's on the memory card. You can choose up to 30 pictures to download at once. You can use the little magnifier here to be able to zoom in on a picture, just like you would any picture. You just pinch and zoom and gives you all the access uh, that uh, you want for that picture. Then you can import it and then certainly share it on, on your favorite social, uh, social media sites. So that's how we do uh, Wi-Fi controls. So that's all built in into the camera. Really neat feature to have while you're traveling. Well, thank you for watching. I hope uh, certainly that you got all your questions answered. If not, feel free to post them in the comments below. Um, certainly subscribe to the channel. And of course, follow us on Twitter at FujiGuys.